Hey everybody, AmpRepair.com, 203-892-4119, also HarbachElectronics.com. So I had to fill some Harbach orders, I had to go to the shipping depot to pick up something I'm going to show you here, not this big thing right here in front of me, something else. Uh, I have amps I'm waiting on parts for, payments for, I'm going to unbox another Ameritron today. I just had, I had like six amps on the bench, and they were just all over. I had to ship some before I could start unboxing more. And I believe I have a, I think it's an A80B I have to pick up today, and then a couple SB220s in the way. So, always uh, very busy here, never ends. I, I love it, keep them coming. So, uh, before I bought my first house, I had a bunch of this Collins stuff. Uh, this is an HF8021, it's a 3 kilowatt auto-tune amp, and yes, it can be run be, um, within the legal limit. I just appreciate amps, I really love amplifiers. Uh, this is one of the earlier ones, but I don't care because, you know, if something happens, I can diagnose and fix it. Um, a lot of the guys who have this stuff, they just swap out parts and, you know, it's a different story. But, so... Um, I want to show something on this one. I'm going to take the panels off in a second, show you the inside of it. So, like I said, you know, I had some of this stuff before. I had the uh, 10 kilowatt one. I had one that was like new, went to a guy on the other side of the country. Uh, I had the uh, special FRT96 version that had the exciter built in. I had uh, another 3 kilowatt one like this. Actually, serial number one. You can see it on my website, and I had the tube one, uh, the auto uh, auto tune tube version, which was the HF8020. Yeah, the HF8020, I believe. Yeah. So I had the 8020, 8021, 8022. So now I have an 8021 and an 8023. If I come across a 10 kilowatt one, it'd be neat. Um, not really interested in using it, but it, that that would be something that would be neat to have. Maybe try to use it at some point at a lower power level but you know go through it and um, you know do the work on it but I just really like amplifiers so like I said I can really appreciate this stuff so uh, there's a weird following with this stuff uh, you know you have the Collins guys and uh, there are a lot of guys that have three four five six seven eight plus of each piece I think it's like a status thing um, I'm still looking for an exciter at some point I'll, I'll find one but uh, certain people that sell them they they want crazy money but then when they're on eBay or QTH or EHAM they're a uh, more reasonable price uh, I'm not a collector uh, I'm someone that will use the stuff so I will I'm gonna actually use this I have the cable I have everything needed to operate it other than the exciter otherwise I'll I can put a only requires 100 milliwatts or so to drive the full output, so I could always use something else. But before I get to this thing, I'll be, you know, finishing the multi-band amp. So, and then I also have the HF8023, which is a solid-state amp in the other room. I was just talking about. I have to go through that. So, the order of my projects are the 160 through 15 meter amp. Then the solid state one, the uh, 8023, I have, uh, yeah, I prefer tube stuff, but I got that solid state amp for peanuts, and I actually have, you know, the transistors, pretty much in every solid state amp come and go pretty quick, but I have, uh, that one uses special transistors, and I actually have, uh, I think, 14 or 18 match pairs, brand new ones, so... I'm friends with the guy who designed it, and he said he's only had to change the transistors, maybe like two of them. It has modules, I think it has four modules, two transistors in each module. So I think he said he's had to change two in one module maybe a few times. So <laughs> I think it's safe to say that I'll have the you know parts for that for the rest of my life. So um, And at some point, I'll probably start fixing those. So I bought all of them for stock. So you know, eventually people will pop them if they pop them and they won't be able to find them and I'll have them okay so so I'm going to pause the video real quick and take the panels off show you the inside and uh, talk about something 
Okay, I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back with the covers off. They come off easily. Uh, the guy I got it from removed the old knobs, put new ones on. The newer style. So this utilizes a 4CX5000 for the final, a 350A, or I forget how many are in there, one or two for the driver. It's a, it's a Tetrode, but they, uh, the way they have it configured, it requires more drive, and that has to do with stability. This thing covers uh, 2 to 30 megahertz in complete spectrum. Well, I think they say 2 to 29.999 or whatever. So um, utilizes a double Pi L output network. Has the tier switching in here and just a really cool amplifier. You can just really, it's really cool. You know, so um, control panel here, the circuit breakers and all that stuff. Side voltage interlocks. So it's very clean. No, no corrosion. I keep my that fan here in the background is my dehumidifier. Keep the humidity at 45 percent or less down here. And uh, this was actually at Com Shelter. Uh, I'm sorry, Com Central at Rockwell. So they took really good care of it. So when I went to buy this, uh, the seller made a mistake. I believe it was an honest mistake. Uh, when I looked at the pictures, he actually had different internal pictures. So the transformer down there, see how it has three terminals? So you always want to be careful. I, I make mistakes. I, I mean, I guess I had no way to know, but if I had seen this, I, I would have known this wasn't correct. So, you see the plate transformer's three phase. It operates on three phase. So either I'm going to use an electronic phase converter to power this, or a three phase generator. Power company also said they'll put three phase in. Unfortunately, they won't do delta. So, see, nice and clean, nice and shiny. Corrosion or anything, no mouse damage. See, a lot of people they who have this stuff, they just let it sit in the garage, and then there's a lot of humidity, corrosion, and mice, and all sorts of bad stuff happens. So it's just a shame, you know. There are people out there that would actually use it. So, you know, when people have a whole bunch of each thing, and then, gosh forbid, something happens to them, and they're their loved ones just chuck everything, you know, gets thrown out, then, you know, it's it's just a shame, you know, it's a real, real shame. But, uh, I'm happy with just one. I'm gonna, you know, like I said, I'll use this. I'll have fun with it. And, um, I don't want the, uh, one kilowatt one. They're just, I have no interest in it. I have the solid state one. Um, like I said, I'm not a collector. So I'll get one exciter, and I'm gonna try to interface it with a monitor transceiver. I want to uh, maintain all of the handshake control, all the protection that um, they put into the exciter uh, power amplifier combo. You know, so they, you know, so it'll uh, protect itself if it goes into an open or something or, or whatever. But anyway, so I have full documentation on this, and so that transformer back there, the plate transformer, I noticed, you know, wasn't the correct one. That's actually out of the older generation. I think it's a 28U-3A, I think it is. Uh, so the seller actually, he made good, and um, he sent me the uh, correct transformer, which is over there. And um, I thank him for that. He's a good guy. And, uh, you know, that transformer is, uh, I think the day code was 1967 or something. So it's old really old so I just wanted the correct transformer uh, at some point I'll have to put it in and stuff will have to come out I'll have to slide it out carefully I mean it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun project but for now I'll just leave it alone but you know if I were to go to sell this you know the average person's gonna be like why does it have a wrong transformer in there plus if I ever wanted it these can be converted to single phase so notice that there are only three terminals and the other one has it's it two, four, six terminals. So all the the so you'd have to change the terminal strips. Either two wires coming out of each core. It's a three phase transformer, like I said. So you'd have to unsolder the see the wires go through the terminal strip. They're soldered. You have to un, you'd have to unsolder those and then 
put a six terminal strip in there and then reconfigure it and that transformer is not like this one looks like it's potted this one is not so I mean there there's some major differences here the other specs are probably the same but you know when you when you buy something you and you expect it to be one way and um I'm sorry that was my phone you know and then uh, you get it and it's not you know it, it, it just sucks you know so but I trusted the seller and he made good so no issues there but i um, very happy with my purchase these are pretty rare I think they're only like um I forget how many he said there they're only 96 of them made I think there are about 40 of them out there in the, the ham world so and they're disappearing either by states throwing them out or um, being in an environment where they just get destroyed, you know, by corrosion. You know, corrosion gets into things and then it's, it's just there's so much to one of these things. You know, so. But it's all auto tune. So, but thanks for watching. I want to make that video real quick and I appreciate uh, the guy I'm sure will be watching um, talking about the video. Thank you for selling it to me and uh, thank you for making good on the honest mistake. So, lots more amplifier content to come, but, you know, I'd take this thing over an AK Ultra or, or any of those other amps any day. This is a mil spec PA. This thing is uh, very, very well built. Very you know, big bucks, big, big bucks when it was brand new. So, again, thanks for watching. 73.